All right, Squatchy. Today we're going to do review alphabets and um, the column word P is the same sound at the beginning and end of the word pop. So p. the next one will be our ejective P. Pop that out a little bit. Um, a good example for that would be the word p -ow -y, p -ow -y. This M is the same M as it would be in English. Uh, the column word for cow is moose, moose. Moose, moose. Mm. This is an ejective M, so you're going to have to um, kind of pop it out a little bit more. A good one would be CM. CM. T, 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 like the word for sleep, eat, t, t. this is an inductive T, a good word for this would be uh, to go home, t ook, t ook, so pop that T up, t, t ook, this N would be the same as it is in English, the word mom, tan, or nutsu, for one. This is an objective N. Um, a good word would be your mom. Un -ton. Un -ton. So it's that abrupt N at un -ton. C. This is pronounced like the end of the word for hats. It's a TS sound. S -s -s. Like the word for mouth. Suits in. S -s. This is an ejective, ejective C. Um, a good example would be the word bird. Say it some. Say it some. Say it some. S. Uh, let's see. Like the word for tooth. Chenas. S. It's just an S sound. This is a C with a wedge, and it's a CH sound like the beginning and end of the word church. Ch, ch. A good column word would be chayu, to enter. Chayu. No, wait, no, that's ejective, sorry. Uh, chuck, like the word big, chuck. This would be good for chayu, so pop that out, chayu. This is a SH sound. If this is an S with a wedge. Um, the clown word for cat, peesh, psh. It's a sh sound, sh, peesh, psh. Why, like in the word for heart, yanoes, yeah, yanoes. This is an ejective Y. Um, when you say by, it would be hoi, it's that abrupt stop at the end of the Y, and it's kind of that tightening in your throat, hoi. This is a barred lambda. It is, um, so you put the tip of your tongue positioned for a T, then you let the air flow, and it's a cheeky sound, so it's a, like a k k k A good word would be small, k uh, and, and you notice it's always ejective. So, uh, this is a barred L, and it's what they say is a juicy sound. So you hold the your tongue in the position for a T, and then you would blow. And this isn't a cheeky sound. It's a um, a good word would be the number word or the number three. Hlih, or Ishlin, to eat Ishlin, or Hlih. This next one is L, like the word Lamatu, for sheep. L Lamatu, or bread, supplein. This K is rare, and it's rare in column, and it occurs in a few bar words from Chinook jargon, English, French, or some other language. Um, it would be 
the same sound at the beginning and end of the English word for kick, k -k -k, like the word kaput, coat, kaput. This is a K with a raised W, like the sound at the beginning of the English word for quick. It's that airy sound because of this raised W. A good example for that would be the word for um, for day, squatchy, squatchy, squatchy. This is an injective K with a raised W. And um, so you eject that K and then you would have that airy sound. A good example would be hikwis, and that's how you say raccoon. Hikwis. So it's a This is a X with a raised W, so it's another airy sound. Um, it's similar to the sound at the beginning of the English word for witch. And you put that W H I C H. Ah, uh, like the word for we'll do three again. She, she, she. It's a sound. This next one is a W, and it's the same sound at the beginning and end of the English word for wow. Woof. This is a W, an ejective W, and it's got that creaky sound because of the tightening in your throat. That's just how it is when you eject some of these letters. And so a good um, example would be the word for new. Hot whisk, hot whisk. This next one is a Q. It's similar to the sound at the beginning of the English word for call. So it's, it's, it's in the, your throat. That sound is further back in your throat. This is an objective Q. A good example for this word would be young woman. This is a back X. The back X is, uh, it's produced with the tongue touching far back in your throat. And then, and then you have that airflow and it kind of sounds like you're clearing your throat. <sighs> A good word for this would be, uh, cedar wood, pipe, pipe. This is a, um, what is it called? A hooked N or an ang, for linguists like to say. Um, so it's similar to the sound at the end of the English word for sung. It's NG sound. Mwah. Mwah. Like the word or moose, moose, or my child. Nah, nah, nah. Mwah. Mwah. This is an ejective hooked N. Mm. An example for this word in Kalalu would be, let's do wish, uh, wishing. So, shit tongue, shit tongue. It's a uh, sound, NG. This is a Q with the raised W. Um, so it's got that airy sound because of this raised W. A word in Kalalum for this letter, a good one would be like water. Quo. It's a qu sound. Qu. So it's this Q is further back in your throat, but then you have this rounded out sound. Qu. Quo. Quo. This is an ejective Q with the raised W. Um, like the word for ear, quine, quine. Back X with the raised W. So you're gonna have that throaty sound, like the back X, but you have this raised W, which is that airy rounded out sound. So it's 
uh, like the word for Elwa, Eshwa, Eshwa. This is called a glottal stop. It sounds like a catch or an abrupt stoppage of air in your throat and it separates two vowels like an uh-oh. It's that pause in the middle. Um, mo'ok for duck. Mo'ok. H. It's the same as the first sound in the English word for hat. Like hooked. And that's another word with that, with that a, um, glottal stop. Hooked. I. It's the same as in the I for the word machine. Machine, so it'd be an E sound. Um, like the word she. It's an E sound. This next one is an E. And this is rare in clalum and it occurs before glottal stops and sometimes before Y's or an ejective Y. And it's the same sound as the E in the English word for bet. Eh. Eh. Like in the, in, like in the clalum word for eh schwa. Eh schwa. E. Eh. This is eh. This is called a schwa. And it's pronounced like an A or an O in the word above, uh, or cut, uh, uh, like, like the word for chessa, uh, U is usually pronounced like the U in English in tune or hoot, um, it, and uh, let's see, a good one would be Ubin, Ubin, or Natsu. A is usually slightly longer than the other vowels, and it's pronounced like vowels in English word, in the English word call. Uh, uh. An example would be Tan, uh, or Aing, or house. And that's it for that. Let's go on to the clalum word. Okay. So, uh, words in clalum can be short and simple, like ton, mother, or long and complex, like in. Oh, um, hold on. Let me pop it up. Ton. Or this really long word, shot. <laughs> Let's try that again. Shot. I don't know if you heard all that, but that's a lot. And this means, and that's that's why you were attacked by fifty of them. Some small words refer to complicated concepts like ehut, ehut gather things together to get rid of them by scraping them up. And some long words refer to simple concepts like us, not, not young us. And that means smiling. Whether long or short, all words in Clallam have a root. The root of the word is the fundamental part of the word that gives its basic meaning. A root may or may not have other elements of meaning attached to it. The word ton, mother, for example, has a root with nothing attached to it. The whole root stands free as a word by itself. In the word not not yes, smiling, the root is in the night right here, which would be right here. And um, and the and the root is night for laughing, and the word for smiling. The root has other elements of meaning attached to it. The units of meaning that can be attached to a root in column includes prefixes and suffixes. The prefix 
attaches to the beginning of the root or to another prefix. The word um, not not young us smiling has two prefixes. It could be this, us, and the um, let me see. The being, the no prefix, which, was, which would be this one, is called locative. Uh, it makes the word refer to a location. Suffix. A suffix attaches to the end of a root to another suffix. The word ehud. Um, let me see. Oh, no, we'll use this word, sorry. Smiling. So the root as for not, not young us has two suffixes, which would be the hot n in the middle, and that means middle voice, adding meaning like do some, and the us pre, uh, suffix would be the face. In addition to prefixes and suffixes, calm has two other types of meaning units that attach to a word. These two other types often dramatically change the appearance of a root. They do not merely stick to the beginning or end. These types are called infixes and reduplication. An infix is inserted into a word to add meaning. Plural is usually marked by an infix. For example, when you put uh, I in, in skaha for dog, you get skayaha. And that means a group of dogs. That would be plural for dog. All the different ways of making the plural are covered in our grammar book in chapter 33. If you have that book, go ahead and check it out. Another common infix, for example, would be the word shooped for whistle. And then it would be become, so you would add that glottal in the middle. And it would for and then it would be shooped for whistling. The word is not not yet less. Uh, smiling has actual infix before the hooked N. So this next one we're going to be going over is reduplication. Uh, when part of a word is copied to add meaning, it is called reduplication. There are several different kinds of reduplication in Clallam. One common uh, one is called diminutive reduplication and it adds the meaning of smallness the pattern applied to skaha dog gets uh skakaha little dog this reduplication pattern includes an infix a glottal infix after a uh, an a so it'd be right here the word us who not not young us smiling also has a diminutive reduplication so let's summarize how the word is for not for not not young us so this is your your root word night the laugh and your suffix in the middle not young diminutive reduplication not not young your actual uh in fix not not young okay not not yeah mm. Uh, your suffix for face, not, not, yeah, let me, let me try that again, not, not, young us. And then you would add your locative prefix, um, so it's not, not, young us. And then your prefix stative to be in the state of smile or small laughing on the face. Us who not not yet us. So that's it, and we'll go 
into more detail with our prefixes and suffixes and infix later on and we'll actually go um we'll have this thing called quinawi where it's a little um dialogue and that would be a really great way to practice them so hot thanks in what Thank <laughs> you.